Hello and welcome to our sailboat fee. In this video, we'll work on the engine. That will be the fuel supply, uh, hose for cooling water, exhaust, and of course, also the electrical wires. So all our priority is only on the engine in this video. Uh, I have a little plan that I would like to start up the engine. I don't think I will manage to do it in this video, but latest in the next video, that's for sure. So um, I think we should get started. The electrical wires is straightforward because we have the electrical wires from the old engine, so it's just to place them and then that's it. And then of course connect the battery. So uh, let's start with that. As I just said, it, it is straightforward to uh, connect the, the wires, so it's just the positive, the plus, here on the starter. That was the first one, and then the negative, the minus, do I have down here, and it should go on this one. So, uh, ah, I need to drill a bigger hole in this uh, connection. Ah, that's fast one. I'll just make that. That was the power supply on the engine. Now I only need to uh, put the cables on the batteries and that is hopefully very easy. That was the power supply and as I said, it was straightforward. I think we should go up in the cockpit and just try to uh, put the ignition on just to see the panel is working. And it works. So uh, basically, if we turn the key further around, then the engine would start almost. We need the fuel supply, and that is our next, next uh, task. So um, let's have a look at that. That is also more or less straightforward because we have all the old pre filter and water separator from the old engine. So it is just to mount it and yeah, connect two hoses. Very easy as well. So let's take that now. I have the pre-filter and the water separator here and yeah, as I told you, it is straightforward to mount because it is from the old engine so uh, it will be very fast. And then it is just to do this without spill diesel all over. And then I just need to connect the hoses. I can see the hoses is not long enough and I have judgment down in the car and of course I have forgot the fuel line at home. So I will bring that tomorrow and then tomorrow we can uh, finish this uh, fuel supply. So uh, I have the gear and gas cable. I can uh, mount them instead of uh, the fuel line. And that is also straightforward. It is very easy as well. I have just removed this from the engine and that is only to place it here on the cable. Like that. And then here I have the gas. So it's just to place it up there. Oh, I need a spacer. Spacer. And then place it up there and another spacer and then li this little fellow and just to remove these two screws right here I have three holes where I can decide where I want the bracket here. So I will take the aft one uh, 
That seems like that is the best option uh, for this mounting. So and I just need the cable up here and and close it. And then the gas cable is mounted. So I will just continue with the gear cable on the port side of the engine. And the gear cable is more or less the same like we did on the gas cable. So uh, it's nothing special in that. And uh, as on the other side, we have three options as well. So I will take the aft. Then I just need to adjust the cable and that can be a struggle because there is not so much space here. And this little fellow on. There will be some final adjustment uh, when the engine is running and etc. But I think we are very close to be spot on now. So um, I will leave it like it is now. I think we should uh, continue with the cooling water hoses. And I have put that uh, in front of me uh, the whole day because it's not the funny part actually. So, uh, but let's get started. And then we have the hoses for cooling water. The first thing I will do here is to remove the cover. Uh, the cover is actually very good because it protects your hands not to get into the belt but uh, every time I need to inspect the belt I will need to remove the cover and that will be very annoying because behind this cover I just have to remove it it's not so easy to remove it actually behind that cover we have the belt and as I said it is very important that I can inspect that without removing the cover first so I think I will now I have removed the car, I will leave it away. I will never mount that again. So every time I open into the engine, then I can immediately look at the belt and I can see if there is any damage or it just needs to be tightened up or something like that. And that is a very important because up here we have the cooling water for fresh water. Over here we have the alternator and yeah, down here we have just have the engine. So it's very important that the belt is in good shape and if I have to remove the cover every time I have to look at the belt, it will just, yeah, it will not happen actually. So away with that. Over here I have the seawater pump and from that one I will need a hose over to the cooling water strainer that I have here. Inside this one there is a filter and that filter should hopefully remove grass sharks, big fish, plastic, whatever we can suck up from the through holes. So um, that is a very important that we will get this mounted as well. But first of all, I will need to turn the seawater pump a little bit around because right now the direction for the hose is not right. Uh, I have to get it the other way around the engine. So that will be my first job to twist the pump so I get the right correction of the inlet. I just need to loosen that four screws that is around. Just like that. And then I can turn the pump in any direction that I want. I want it more or less like this. I will fix the hose after. Uh, but yeah, just like that. I think that's pretty good. Just like that. And then I need to fix that hose. I just need to make sure that the hose can't touch the uh, the belt. That is very important because then it will be destroyed very fast. So, uh, but I'm pretty sure this will work. And now I can continue with the hose from the, the seawater pump 
over to the water strainer that I have here. I will mount that in the back corner over there. I think that will be the, not the best place, but more or less the only place I can find in there. So, uh, yeah. I will try to mount it. The cooling water strainer is mounted and I think it's not the best place for it, but it is more or less the only place I can find in there. So uh, it has to be there. Uh, I can't find any other solution. So I'm ready for uh, trying to fit the hose in there and it should be very easy as well. The hose I use is uh, also from Vitus. Uh, it is definitely not the cheapest one. It is around uh, 30 yeah 30 us dollars per meter so it's quite expensive but it's very flexible and it can be bended a lot before you will get a, a sharp corner up here so um yeah that's the reason why i use it uh, next is i think it will last for yeah, i don't know how many years many years at least so um <clears throat> sometimes it, it it worth to give a little bit extra for something like this then up there, I think that it looks pretty good. Then I just need my knife. That was the first one. The second one will need to go down to the seacock, but uh, unfortunately the seacock is too small for this hoses. So uh, I have to replace it. I will do that uh, uh, hopefully tomorrow. I will not do it today. Then I just need some clamps and uh, then I am, f yeah, and then of course the new seacock, but then I'm finished with the uh, with the seawater side. Then I just need the air wind, but uh, I will do that in, in a minute after I have put the clamps on. The clamps I use is this one, uh, the heavy duty one. I think that is much better compared to uh, the cheap one here. And that's the reason why I use them. Uh, I'm, I don't know if how much better they are, but I have a very good feeling when I'm using this. And sometimes uh, boat building is just a good feeling that you know what you have done and you know it will last for yeah, a long term. So um, that's the reason why I'm using uh, the expensive one here. So um, I will mount them. Just like that. I will do the same on the cooling water strain up there. Also with the same type of claims. The cooling water strainer is mounted and if you ask me, it looks pretty good. I'm satisfied at least. The next is uh, the air wind, gooseneck, uh, water lock. I don't know the correct name I have heard all three of them so um but this one it should prevent overflowing in the engine from seawater and i can't tell you so much about it because i don't know anything about it i have just read the installation manual and i will mount it exactly like that nothing more nothing less and from the engine up to here there should go a hose and from here and down to the exhaust there should go a hose. From the first one, there should be a T-piece, and from that goes down to the uh, stern tube, because that is a water lubricated. So um, that is the plan. 
I will mount it in here uh, under the stairs or inside the stairs and then directly down to the engine and from the engine and I will only show you how I will mount it so um, let's get started inside here in the stairs I will mount it because it should be approximately 40 centimeters above the water line and that is exactly on top of the stairs in here I will take a camera up in a short minute but it should be in here and um, that is just two screws like this and yeah then the hose is up hose is down and that is basically that I think so far but uh, I will mount this and the air wind is mounted in there and as you probably can see I have two holes down here where the hoses from the engine comes up and goes down to the exhaust so uh, that is a uh, straightforward The air vent, gooseneck or water lock, whatever we should call it, is mounted now and uh, it just took much longer time than expected. So uh, actually the clock is half past 9 p.m. now and uh, we have not catch so much on camera. We have just tried to do it and make the installation as good as possible. So um, we are tired. Especially Rike, I can see. <laughs> she is sitting just there. And with an open face but uh, we will uh, we will uh, go home and uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning and then it is the next day and i have already fitted the hose for fuel it was a very easy job it just took a few minutes and it's more or less plug and play uh, there is a diesel to the engine and from the engine and that's more or less that yeah that we have the the pre-filter and water separator but more or less back and forward but I was reading the manual for the air wind and we have forgot one hose and of course we have to mount that and we will do that now actually. Like it is just in progress in there with uh, some clamps that we have forgot yesterday to tighten up. So uh, when she finished with that we will uh, continue with the forgotten hose. And as you can see there is two kind of air wind. There is an A and a B. I thought it was the B we had but it isn't. It is the A. And on the A went, we need a hose out here and out in the top side, or at least minimum 15 centimeters, six inches above the water line. So this hose is the one we need to mount now. And that means that I have to go down under the cockpit again. So um, that is the job right now. We need to mount that uh, forgotten hose. And uh, of course, we also need to mount the exhaust. And now I am under the cockpit. I can fix the exhaust as well. So um, that would be my next job. Um, I was out and find the eight millimeter hose yesterday for the air vent is here. So um, yeah. And the plan with this uh, little hose is that when the engine is running, a small amount of water will escape into the air vent and out in this hose and out in the top side or whatever the outlet is and that should indicate that the air vent is working so um yeah i can't tell you so much about it because i don't know so much about the air vent and yeah gooseneck water lock whatever we should call it but um according to the manual we need that hose so that's the reason why we are mounted so uh, that is the job now and it is more or less straightforward, at least he in here. Like it is on the other side and we'll um, put it through to the under the cockpit and then I will go down there. And when I'm down there, I can yeah, fix the exhaust house as well. So um, let's do that. I have, I have just been down under the cockpit and uh, the little tin hose from the air wind is out there now and we are ready for drill the hole in the top side. I didn't bring the camera it, it it's just too difficult um, and uh, yeah when I was there I could take the exhaust with me back and uh, it's here now we just have to shorten a little bit up uh, I think it is around one meter three feet too long so um, that's a very easy 
But uh, yeah, that is the next one, and then uh, after that, we will uh, build the hole. I have the X house here, and I just need to shorten it a little bit up, and it should be around here. So, uh, just need a little bit out. <coughs> yeah, and whew, it's a it's a heavy one. The little holes from the air vent is here and going through the cabin and out in the cockpit as I told you previous. But uh, yeah, now I need a knife and I have it down here. And then I just need to mount it on the engine and put this on. Heavy duty clamps again. And then the x house is mounted as well, so uh, we are very close to be finished now. Down here I have the inlet to a water lubricate on the stern tube and the hose, that was the one from the T piece up there, is here and just have to fit it down here and then a clamp on. Then we are ready with this one and as you probably can see I also need to tighten up all the uh, the cables and hoses we have down here so it looks nice uh, right now it's just a mess of cables and lines etc so um, it doesn't look that pretty but it will i've placed a clamp here on the inlet to the water lubricate and also here on the stern tube so um, we are completely finished down here the only thing i need is to move this mounting piece here the stern tube is finished now. So the only thing I need to do now is drill the hole in the top side and then of course also the seacock. I have forgot that. So uh, I have some Seeker Flex. I always use Seeker Flex uh, 291. That is one of my favorites and uh, I'm pretty sure there's many other brands that is exactly as good as this one but um, I'm very comfortable to use this and ha never have any problems. So, um, I use it at this, and I know there's many people that are uh, very happy with the 3M5200, I think the number is, and that's all, also a good one, but it's, it's not so easy to get here in Denmark. They have it in the marine shops, but, um, but the Seeker Flex is just easier to buy, so um, I use that. So basically we are finished with all the hoses to and from the engine. The only thing I need now is to drill the hole in the top side and uh, I have postponed it all day because I just hate to drill a hole in the top side but uh, we have to do it and that is more or less also the last thing we can do today. It is a new year tomorrow and uh, we have to prepare a little bit because we get, get a lot of guests in our house so um, yeah. We will uh, drill the hole and um, place this little thing true holes is it is a very tiny one so um and then of course place the holes and uh yeah that's it basically
the little true hole is uh, mounted and uh, the hose as well. So um, now we are more or less finished with the engine. We are very close to be ready for startup. We of course need to uh, fill up with oil and coolant and etc. So um, hopefully, cross fingers, next time we can uh, start up the engine. This was the last video in actually this decade. Uh, so um, hopefully see you next year. And uh, with that, we will wish you a uh, Merry I'm going to go to the Suck! I'm going to have a new year. Yeah. We will wish you a happy new year. The little true hole in the top side is mounted and uh, the hose from the air wind and out there is mounted as well. So uh, all hoses, wires, cables to and from the engine is mounted. So we are very close to being ready for the first startup. It will not be this video as I said in the beginning, but uh, hopefully in the next video we will be ready for that. Kim, our good friend, he will join us and make sure that we have done everything correct. and also line up the engine so this shaft is in level etc i don't know what he will do but he will take care of that and make sure everything is in good order before we start up the engine so this video was the last one in this decade uh, i hope we will see all of you in the next year or next decade actually so uh, with that i will wish you all a happy new year and please take care Happy New Year and please take care of all of you. See you. See you.